Welcome to the underground, you rebel scum. This is the American expat. So I've noticed that there's a lot of bad news in the world. Maybe you've noticed this too. Things seem a little bit chaotic. It seems like things are going down. It's out of your control. It's very stressful. And it can be kind of hard to deal with from time to time. Um, I know myself, especially, you know, when I look at the news or hear about things, just now I saw something talking about how the stock market is a bubble and it's going to crash and stagflation is here and things are just looking really bad. They were, you know, putting it in the context of the economy's bad, so Donald Trump will win. But uh, and while I, you know, might feel inclined to have that uh, outcome, the result, I really don't look forward to going through a hard economy in the meantime, because, you know, we all have families to take care of and that sort of thing. Um, but it, it's stressful because it's out of your control. You can't do anything about it. But I, I wanted to share something that I feel is important that has helped me during times when things are chaotic or stressful or just really, really busy. That's helped me to get through it a little bit easier. I can't, you know, you can't get rid of the stuff that's causing the problems, the chaos and all of that. But there are things you can do to help deal with it or get through it anyway. So stick around. We're going to be talking about that coming up in just a second. Thanks for sticking with us. I know that's really annoying. Uh, the whole coffee and then moving the thing. Sorry about that. Um, but anyway, like I said, you know, things are pretty crazy right now. I, I don't know if it's crazy for you. I assume that things are just as chaotic for you and your family or your situation as they are here. And looking at the news certainly doesn't help. But I had an experience. This would have been long ago when I was uh, doing missionary work. I am, um, well, you know, a different kind of missionary work than you're probably familiar with. You know, most people think of missionary work and they think of people going off to Africa and, you know, like digging wells and that sort of thing. This was a proselyting mission. I've uh, mentioned this in other videos. I was part of the LDS church, the Mormon church, and I was one of those guys on the bike. So I went away for two years and did nothing but uh, teach people about that church. Well, not just about the church, but, you know, our version of I guess the gospel or about Jesus Christ. I say our version. So I don't really go to the church anymore. But uh, I've talked about that as well. But just the same, it was quite an experience. And uh, when I was there, you have this person that the church puts in charge of the whole mission. Uh, he's called the mission president. And usually it's a very inspiring person. I had two of them. Um, both were, you know, really, really great uh, people from my experience. But the first one was especially good at speaking. When he would get up and speak, I don't know what it was about the way he did it. Uh, you, you really felt like whatever he said, you would want to go out and do that uh, that thing right away. I mean, if he was in charge of an army, I feel like he'd be able to inspire them to go into any situation. It was a really uh, incredible experience, but he also, his wife, was uh, just as inspiring with the kinds of uh, speaking that she would give, and whatever you think about uh, the the Mormon Church or whatever, this this message really stuck with me because you know life at that time was very chaotic and busy. We would get up at six thirty every single day. We would say prayers, you know, study scripture, exercise, go over our plans for the day, and then be out at nine. And stay out until about 8.30 in the evening, just teaching people and doing that sort of work. And then come back, do uh, planning for the next day, say our prayers and go to sleep and just do that every single day, nonstop for two years. I mean, Mondays, we didn't go out in the first part of the day because we use that for like washing clothes and stuff. But you can imagine, it was a very busy time. And at 19 years old... That's uh, not usually what you're you're doing, you know, <laughs> usually doing other things, but uh, that's what we were doing. And yeah, it would get kind of stressful at times. It was very busy, as I said. Uh, some of the places that I was going were places where you'd never probably want to go. It was very interesting, but um, yeah, like I said, it would get very chaotic. Just uh, think of, you know, your life now is chaotic. It was busy and chaotic. Work gets chaotic and busy. Well, anyway, uh, as I was saying, she was very good at giving these uh, these speeches, just like the guy, the mission president. And one day she got up and she said, you know, that with life being chaotic or stressful, it's important to have little things to look forward to in the day. 
And, um, you know, it could be anything as small as like uh, somebody had mentioned, like they look forward to flipping their pillow over and just the cold side of the pillow. It could be something as small as that, but just something in your day that you can look forward to. So even though you go through all this crazy stuff, there is something at the end of the day that you can kind of enjoy or where you don't have to think about all that stuff. And it really helps you to get through the chaotic stuff that's going on around you. For me, I, I know when I was living in China, the, uh, the thing that I always looked forward to was my walk home. It was usually at night in the dark, you know, that Chinese cities are full of neon lights and all kinds of stuff. So it was kind of like walking home in a, a what would you call it, like a cyber, cyberpunk-esque or Blade Runner-esque uh, sort of environment. There's big buildings with neon stuff all over them. I guess now it's LED. But um, it was really incredible. There'd be people everywhere buying stuff, eating, talking, the smell of barbecue, you know. It was... Um, for me, of course, I didn't have to talk to anybody. So I was just walking along, observing this. I'd love to take photos at the time. And I really looked forward to that at the end of the day. So after everything was done, all the, the chaos, I would enjoy that walk home. Um, as I said, it can be anything, you know, in this age, though, it's very important to have those things that you can look forward to at the end of the day or whatever time of day it is. So that, uh, you know, I guess it makes it all worthwhile in a way. It's not all just chaos and stress. There's one little thing that you have to enjoy. One little thing. I I'm, I, I know uh, doing work and hard work and seeing your family benefit from it is, is satisfying and it's something to look forward to. But I'm talking about something where you don't have to think about the work and the stress and the chaos. Something where you put the news aside and that's why I would say don't uh, let the thing be getting on social media <laughs> because you'll be just adding to the stress, but um, something, anything that you can do that you don't have to think about that stuff at, during that time, something that you can sit quietly or whatever, whatever it is for you. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's not a quiet thing, but just something you can look forward to where you don't have to think about other stuff. And I, I, I think that would be beneficial uh, to a lot of people. Right now, the thing that I do, of course, is I go out and take photos. I'm not an expert photographer or anything, but I try and I enjoy doing it. So it's something I get to look forward to during the day when I don't have other things to do that I can go out and not think about anything else except trying to take photos that I enjoy. I don't you know, I don't know what other people think of them, but uh, I enjoy the the experience of going out and doing that. And I can forget about all the crazy stuff that's going on in the world. I can forget about uh, our currency being inflated into oblivion or, you know, that uh, they're taking property in New York or any of that stuff. I don't have to worry about it, at least for that little bit. I'm not saying to cover your eyes and not ever think about the stuff that's going on. You don't want to be blind, but at least take a, a short amount of time in the day where you don't have to think about that stuff. And, you know, it'll, I hope, help to get through all the chaos that's going on in the world right now. And that's what I wanted to say. I'm going to end it with that. Uh, you can take the advice, do whatever you want with it. But um, yeah, it, it's going to be an interesting week over the next little bit. I'm going to try to get videos out every day like I have been doing. Um, but you know, my, my son, well, he's going to be off school for the next week. So it's going to be an interesting one. I, um, uh, I have plans. I want to take him to see some places, but, uh, we'll, we'll see how I manage. I'm going to take the computer with me and some of the equipment and I'm going to try, like I said, to upload wherever it is we end up going. Um, I should still have something up every day. So if you look forward to the videos, I don't know if you do. I, I look forward to getting them out there and hearing what everybody has to say in the comments and that sort of thing. Then uh, I guess I, I won't prevent that from happening. Or I'll do the best that I can anyway. And with that, I, I, again, I better get off of this and get back to the chaos of the world here. Or maybe I'll just go take some photos before I go pick up my son. And I'll see you guys in the next one. ไปพวงหลงเฝ้าพระเจ้าบางกงหางเวงงหลงเกอ